In a groundbreaking discovery, scientists found that a population of elite controllers have a weird genetic propensity that makes them immune to HIV. Hi everyone, Shri here. We're back today with some really cool science about a virus that maybe hasn't been the main one on our minds lately, HIV. Now, HIV has a storied history, politically, societally, but the essentials of what make this virus so deadly and long-lasting lies in what this virus does to the human body. HIV is what we call a retrovirus, a virus with a bunch of RNA in it, which by definition is less stable than DNA. But this little virus doesn't stay unstable for long because it actually comes along with a special little protein which can read the RNA back into DNA. Imagine the virus as a bunch of pictures of virus pieces and a little nerd who can describe them in text and stick that text into the middle of the paragraphs which make up your DNA. Okay, so these viruses basically stick their DNA into immune cells, leading to a bunch of immune cells dying, which leads to being super vulnerable to infections that normally wouldn't even affect us. And that's what we know as AIDS, or Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. While HIV used to be a terminal diagnosis, recent advances like using antiretrovirals, bone marrow transplants to replace dying immune cells, pre-exposure prophylaxis for high-risk patients, or even the first foray into genetically modifying an embryo using CRISPR have allowed patients with HIV to live longer, healthier lives. Last week, another such groundbreaking discovery about how HIV works was published in Nature. In this pioneering work, scientists looked at a tiny percent of patients with HIV, 0.05%, who actually control the infection on their own. No drugs, no treatment, no clearing of the virus, which is what we call basically getting rid of the DNA. That virus DNA, that weird chunk of text, it's still in their immune cells. But for some reason, instead of killing the cells and causing AIDS, it's just kind of chilling. But why? Why do some patients have full chunks of virus DNA just not being read into RNA, proteins, and more baby viruses that wreak havoc on other patients? Well, it turns out that through sequencing of the viral DNA, the authors showed that in these elite controller populations, the virus DNA was sort of stuck in a place where the cells couldn't read it. Basically, while DNA can exist as either readable, like a messy ball of yarn, or inaccessible, like in a tight little spool, elite controllers had the virus DNA happen to be in the spools. If you sort of think of this as the text paragraphs in the big book of DNA for the cell, this is like a few of the pages sticking together and skipping over making the virus. But man, what luck, right? Those virus pieces could have wound up anywhere in the genome and they went to a place where it can't be read. It's probably not just that. There does seem to be some sort of genetic disposition as to who gets lucky and there's still more to parse out there. But in the meantime, knowing how this small population of patients can naturally control their HIV infections might lead to newer and better ways to treat HIV for everyone. And that's The Cutting Edge.